Top five, top five, top five. So that we'll go back with another video. I'm Strange Wing. He is Nate. Today we're doing top five man versus animal films in honor of Ejo Sarbo's Beast. He'll tell you about the top five and how they work. And about our social media, I mean. If you scroll down to the description box below, pop it open, you'll find links to our social media accounts. So click on those, give us a follow. We also have links to our coffee account. And our Patreon account, if you'd like to help support our channel financially, we'd really appreciate that. There's some good bonus stuff in the Patreon for very cheap. We also had a thanks button right there on the YouTube bar. But if you're not going to do any of those things... Then go to fucking hell. Or subscribe, because it's free. Yeah, do that too. And you still get to help us out. If you don't know how we do our top fives, he's going to start with his five and four. I'll give my five and four, three, two, three, two, then we trade off number ones. And then we also have something called the Zemeckis rule, which just means if we both have the same movie on our list, but one person has it two spots or higher, we'll just talk about it once. I hope the 11 people to watch this took that as a joke. Because it's a joke. <laughs> number five for me is going to be a primal Nicholas Cage. He hunts animals that are exotic and dangerous and whatnot. They're on this boat. Some asshole, he lets them out. So all these people are getting eaten by lions, tigers, and some bears. Oh my. And they're on a boat. And they're trapped with them. It's not great. I haven't seen a lot of these movies. Yeah. So it's just like Nick Cage. Get your little goofy ass in there. Number three for me. Uh, you know, it counts. Planet of the Apes, War for the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, okay. Because only, so, <laughs> one is like, I guess science made him smarter with the shots and whatnot from the first film. But yeah. that one, mm -hmm. he took and taught the animals to talk and mm -hmm. be very more human like than they already were when they were just primates so it counts they're fighting this war with people who are like man fuck these apes mm -hmm. it's not the greatest movie in the franchise but it's the one where you get the most fighting between man and ape and with the CGI and whatnot at that time period and motion capture where it is you get some you get the right people in those ape costumes like they do and you get some great fucking action scenes because apes are strong, they're athletic, they can fly and do shit. Not fly, but they can like jump very far. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking fun. Well, it's like there's also different types of, like there's orangutans, there's gorillas, yeah. there's you know chimps, and they can, apes. They kind of all do some different things. So. Yeah. So you just have this like great action scene. The lead up to it's not so great. Woody Harrelson in that trailer. 10 out of 10, the Woody Harrelson role we got in that movie. That shit whack. Uh, so my number five, uh, you said you hadn't seen a lot of these. I've also not seen a lot of these. I thought about trying to make some like stretches that still technically counted in here. Like, I'm pretty sure that this is not on your list, but turtles are animals and Shredder is a man. So Yeah, I tried to leave science out of it as much as possible. Is a reach, yeah. Uh, well, I couldn't help but for one, but... Uh, Which one are you taking? Anyways, my number five. It was between two, you know, and it was just because they were terrible, uh, but they were like so bad that they're funny. So my number six ended up being Piranha Three Double D, uh, but I went with the Meg because oh I forgot about the Meg. The Meg's good. Yeah, we just had like that movie was fun. Like the Meg should have made my list. It's not good, but it's fun. That's uh, very fun. And I really, really was so happy. When that yappy little dog finally got got. Yes. That was, like, a great way to cap things off. It's also, like, that thing's fucking massive. Like, Jaws, Bruce is big, but, like, he's not that fucking big. Like, if you at least feel like the humans stand somewhat of a chance against him. and don't have to do all this crazy shit they do in the Meg. So, yeah. Jason Statham did Jason Statham, Jason Statham things, and there was a really big fucking shark. Uh, my number four, one with the birds. Uh, so I haven't seen it. Oh, really? I'm kind of yeah. scared to watch it because of just oh, how bad the hey. like, visual effects are. Yeah, in the movie. it, like, don't, you need to go in it without expecting it to be as good as, like, because I know you've seen some of Hitchcock's not as good movies. Yeah. Just expect it to be like those. Like, to me, it's like, if I made a top five Hitchcock, it might be number five. So it's not, like, incredible, 
but it does a lot of things that are really cool because nothing like this had ever really existed before. The movie just, man, now I don't want to say some of this because you haven't seen it, but I'm going to anyways. Uh, like it does not explain any reason why the birds are all of a sudden attacking people. So it's like, that's a very Hitchcockian, right? Like he doesn't, you don't, he knows you don't need a lot of the information and that actually makes it more terrifying that you don't get a reason. Other really interesting thing about the birds, it has no score. Really? And so it's very, it feels like a little more real because you're just like, there's no music to try to suck you in or anything like that. It is just life with these people and then birds attack. And it's a classic. So anytime you get through a classic in a list, it's a good day. I feel like, to elaborate more on that, like Hitchcock just has like a level of greatness. So when you go to, when you said not so great films, to me, they're still great. Yeah, expect it to be a, but, a lesser Hitchcock. But there's not like the visual thing. It's just like, ah, oh, that looks so bad. Yeah. It does. The birds don't look good, but it came out in 60 something. I mean, or whenever it came out. It might be. Yeah. Who knows? My number four is Blackwater. Your number three? Three. Because you switched them. I did. (laughs) Number three is Blackwater. I've been peeking at that list. (laughs) My phone's in my crotch, so whenever he's looking at your phone. Blackwater is my number three. You get a sister, you get these sisters and a boyfriend. And some weird guy who takes boats through uh, Australia. And they go through the swamp. Alligator was like, man, fuck these Aussies. Tips the boat over. Eats the guy no one cares about because he's just trying to make a living. Taking his little boat through the water. Fuck him. He is eaten. So you have the boyfriend, the two sisters trapped on these trees. And they're trying to get the safety. They can't be out there all night. This fucking fucking crocodile alligator whatever the hell it is it's like waiting for him it's like you feeling froggy kermit jump i dare you i double dog dare you i trip it all day you motherfucker he's waiting on him such a great tension the alligator for the mid 2000s looks very very good too independent film on a lower budget great stuff for what it is and it will get you on the edge of your seat at times just because like these motherfuckers are not sitting there waiting. And sooner or later, like, I'm dehydrated. Like, you got gnats fucking with you. And mosquitoes fucking with you the whole time. So you're getting agitated. And you, as a character, you're like, God damn. Bro, I cannot do that shit. So it gets you invested in the movie just because the relatability of, like, being outside and being a human. And being annoyed by gnats and things like that. Makes sense. Obviously, they will make a move. And the tension in that is peak. Very yeah. good. Uh, ever since we started the video, I've like progressively thought of more man versus animal movies that I actually have seen. I don't know that anyone would make my list. You're talking about alligators, made me think of Gator. Um, with Burt Reynolds. With Burt Reynolds. I don't know. I've never seen that There's movie. A fight alligators. His name's Gator. Yeah. Well, but there's a, definitely a Gator in the movie, right? Him. So there's no actual alligators in that movie. I mean, there's probably in shots. Huh. They don't fight well, anything. Yeah, well, my follow-up was going to be, I don't even know if that would count or not. But know. then that made me think, and I'm not going to switch my list up, but I do want to interject and ask you real quick. Would you count Jumanji as a man versus animal movie? If it was at your five or four, I would be like, that makes sense. Yeah. I wish I had thought about that, because I probably yeah. would have. But anyways, my number three, again... It's a terrible movie. Number two. Oh, we're not done with you yet? Uh, no, my bad. Go ahead. Usually it's the other way around. You just talked so much. I thought... I do talk a lot. Well, you don't normally... Go ahead. Number two is Crawl. I got the alligators together. This film, Sam Raimi, you have... The, he takes this character who's kind of basic, but he gives her enough to make her likable and to make you care about her. And then he just... I have these little alligators in the tornado and flood and whatnot in Florida, you know, so it all makes sense. Hurricane. Hurricane. Yeah, whatever it is. Um, and it's just, oh my goodness, it's fun. There's tension in it. I went into this movie thinking it was going to be stupid as fuck, but I got my AMC 3 for the week, son, so I said I'll use it on this hoe. And I went in and it was fun. 
one of the, like, the perfect amount of scariness. There's no jump scares in it. You know, it's a good, well-made horror movie, but it's relatable. There's not no boogeyman coming to get you. Fucking, like, there's our number one, which you know what it is. And then right below it, decent amount of distance, I put Crawl. And then all the other movies. <laughs> and Blackboard. Blackboard's pretty fucking good, too. Nice. Uh, I never saw Crawl. But Very good. I'm sure it probably would have... It definitely would have made this list specifically. Ease. You got, the greatest of ease. Yeah, that's right. My number three, again, it's a terrible movie, but I had a lot of fun with it. It's Snakes on a Plane. You know what Snakes on a Plane is. There's Samuel L. Jackson, and he's on a plane with snakes, and he says that he's tired of them. And it's just really fun to watch. I don't I don't have anything else for Snakes on a Plane. Have you, put, that. have you seen the deleted scene with Jerry Seinfeld? I don't think so. Who put these snakes on this plane? Is that like a real thing? <laughs> I was yeah. thought about that. that How great would that have yeah, been? Yeah, that would have been dope. If just like if he was just like in the middle, like just like in the beginning of the movie before like everyone starts getting eaten and shit. Yeah. Who put these snakes on this plane? Well, that would be really great because he's he eaten. Because he is kind of like where the whole What's the deal with airline food yeah. thing comes from? So, yeah. uh, uh, shout out to the goat. Yeah. Uh, mine, I understand you're trying to stay away from science, but if I get the chance to put this movie on the list, list, I'm not going to not do it. It's Jurassic Park. There's people and they're versus dinosaurs, which is like more so people running from dinosaurs and then they try to fight them and they like just get fucked up really bad. Uh, and it literally takes another dinosaur to save them. But Jurassic Park is incredible. Uh, the amount of tension it does. Because really what makes... I almost feel like something that makes a very good man versus animal movie is one that conveys how much more power over humanity nature really does have if it wanted to. Jurassic Park is a great example of that. People don't stand a chance against them. It's very good for us that they are extinct. It was a really dumb idea to bring them back. And that is kind of the point of that movie. And it's very good. King Kong. Would King Kong count? I mean... Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know why not. There's no I, science in it. Yeah. He just exists I on think this it's, island. I think it's scarier. And, like, you can definitely see that. He's in not most, an alien. Five. So, yeah. When, like, this is shit that we can go to the zoo and see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, number one, I'm going to say for us... Jaws. Yeah, absolutely. You've seen Jaws. I don't need to say anything. If you haven't, you should. But <laughs> Watch it in the Look, winter. Enjoy I will say this. Summer. I put watching Jaws off for a really, really long time. Uh, and it was before I had the appreciation for movies that I have now. But before, it was because it was old. Or I watched the beginning of it and it seemed kind of slow. Or like, what? Like, I had a bunch of reasons for not watching Jaws. And then I watched Jaws. That shit is just a really good movie. So, like, push past any reservations you have about watching it and watch it. It's so good. Strange Wang will say it's a perfect film. A lot of people would. They would. Tell us down below your top five in the comment section. Scroll back up, hit the like button, share the video. And subscribe.